points, locking in the Arms Warrior and the Elemental Shaman. Typically a strong composition into Destruction Warlocks historically. However, having it seen it played out since the recent Honor Talent Demon Armor, it is not nearly as effective, so I'm not sold on this pick by ABC. Not completely, but I still think it's not a bad blind lock in here for ABC. Jamie now caught into a leg sweep. Decent pressure coming in from Rezus. I'm actually going to be checking out his talents here in a second to see if he's running Tiger Ivory. We normally see that, and it shreds through a lot of the armor that an Elemental Shaman does have available. Great pressure here from Plot Twist early on off the back of that uh, Infernals as well as Dark Soul from Infernion. But once those fade, that's when pressure will start going in favor of ABC as they're more of a, a stable composition. They don't bring big burst cooldowns, but more just consistent damage, consistent defense, and that really is the power of the composition ABC has available. All right, Infernion's Infernals have now faded so his damage is going to be a lot lower and that means his, he's going to be a less of a threat so he's playing more defensive at the corner trying to duck in and out but in the meantime Asgrath wants to take an opportunity knowing that this is a low point of damage in time in this match tries to get crowd control but not able to bank any significant defensive cooldowns off the back of that initial exchange now looking for a cyclone with his Ursul's Vortex pulls Numbles back in his line of sight well played by Asgarath but still simply put just no counter pressure Yep, but that was the uh, Life Cocoon from Numbliz onto Infernion, so now Numbliz won't have that to sort of fall back onto if he really needs. Good pressure still on Jamie Asgrath with no Iron Bark. This is an opportunity for Plot Twist to try to push through, but not really too many defensives left available for them. Nixie getting Grapple Weapon there by Rezus, or Numbliz actually, who is running it in this matchup. And Rezus, interestingly enough, is not running the Tiger Eye Brew, often for the Alpha Tiger Talent instead. When he Tiger Palms a target, it will allow him to get additional haste sort of a bloodlust effect. It makes the Windwalker Monk Fist of Fury particularly powerful. When he can have that up, it will allow him to do a lot of damage. I think one thing teams are going to be exploiting now since the focus growth nerfs on Restoration Druids is switching targets. Life Bloom is way more expensive, and you have to press it three times on a target to stack it to three on that focus gr growth to get the bonus healing effect. So you can waste three global cooldowns of the Druid by just switching to a target that does not have Life Bloom stacked up. That Druid then has to expend three global cooldowns and all of the mana to switch it and so far plot twist have been bouncing between jamie and nixia's targets which has taxed as grass mana however during this moment he's found an opportunity to sneak away and potentially regenerate that mana lead that plot twist were establishing not too significantly fortunately for their side but this switching target strategy is going to be a lot more effective yeah rezu's good pressure here but he gets caught into the storm bolt rezu's could go down he's in execute range Gets the karma in the nick of time in order to survive. That was a nice setup from ABC, but they're reversing the pressure here on the Nixie. Die by the sword has to be traded out by Nixie. Iron Bark as well. So much damage. Could ABC potentially fall? Nixie has to play defense. Line of sight. Get out of trouble as soon as possible, and he managed to do so, but that was a lot of pressure for both teams. Both Nixie and Rezu is going to be very vulnerable moving forward. Yeah, both teams really. I mean, it's mostly Asgrass Mana that is going to be taxed, and it's the defense cooldowns of Plot Twist that ABC are looking to navigate through but Nixie is falling even further behind heroic leaping back to safety gets ring of peace back into midfield inferno on blasting another ring of peace they're gonna pin in the air like a volleyball trying to tee off for a kill they spell lock Asgaroth they've got the infernals coming crashing down on the Nixie everything is looking so good for plot twist to close it out they've got two more seconds till that iron bark defense is available Asgaroth trades it out immediately but it may not be enough if inferno gets a single chaos bolt here they're likely to close Asgaroth denies the chaos bolt with a cyclone Nixie he's desperate does he retreat away he, he's so terrified right now of the next incoming chaos bolt jamie has grounding totem they need to make sure that they get an interrupt or a grounding totem on this chaos bolt going for that mortal coil gets denied on the double good decurse there jamie gets feared up dispelled instantly no chaos bolt timing despite that huge wave of crowd control perfect execution plot twist damage is being thwarted away grapple weapon slowing down nixie Ring of Peace again, <laughs> getting Nixie punted into center field. Chaos Bolt gets storm bolted. Good denial by Nixie. Doing his best to stall this out, but if Asgaroth can't get mana back, it's not looking too good. Yeah, but he does manage to sit down for a drink and regenerate most of his mana. Now ABC has a massive lead before we get into dampening. Infernion could be in some trouble. Potentially need to see a Ring of Peace coming in from Rezus and a Numbless to keep him alive. Nixie with good pressure, though. Caught into the leg sweep. Rezus looking to counter pressure. Put the damage onto Nixie. Asgarath is able to deflect with the Iron Bark. Nice incapacitate. ABC manages to survive that setup. Now for Neon, he's going to have to run away, try to avoid some damage, as now it's Nixie and Jamie's time to get aggressive. Oh, Stormbolt! 
He's got one more second touch of Karma. Sneaks in for Reznus again, a close call, almost getting killed there in game number one, not wanting to lose that blind pick advantage. Neither team wants to give away that. We see Asgaras' ability to drink allows his team to stay in for a late game, but pressure from Plot Twist cannot be disrespected. Nixie needs to be careful for another at least 30 seconds to have access to his die by the sword defense. They do have decent counter pressure. Rezus is forced to retreat away. Nixie gets pre grappled weaponed on the Stormbolt Sharpened Blade. That's the only reason Rezus isn't dead right now. Rezus on fire in terms of defense and offense to stay in it, but the mana advantage is establishing itself. Yep, Numbla's now caught into a Cyclone. Rezu's still in a lot of trouble. Caught into the Lightning Lasso. Infernion trying to back him up with the Shadow Fury, but I don't know if Rezu's is going to be able to get away. He needs to Whoa. escape. Gaining to safety. Has his touch of death rolling, but really can't take ah. advantage of it. And now Nixie all over him. Rezu's still kiting behind the pillar in line of sight of Jamie. Jamie gets some damage off. Rezu's finally reconnecting with Numbla's. Numbla's able to heal him up, but what a close call that was for Plot Twist. 30 seconds on Infernals for Infernion. He needs to get a kill with this set of Infernals. So before that point, they would like to force something like an astral shift or an iron bark and they may be able to get it if they can get astral shift from jamie nixie tries to hold on to it with a triple intimidating shout followed up by a hex good crowd control nice swap onto inferno on that banks them an unending resolve a very powerful defensive cooldown out of the way and amidst this crowd control attempt in burst moment asgrass snuck away and regenerated back to full mana abc have set themselves up very well in this position but they did trade astral shift before the infernals infernals have landed inferno needs to get a chaos bolt with this set of infernals can he get it, or will he get denied? Double leg sweep. Where are the Chaos Bolts? He's casting it, but one second left in the stun. He gets one. He needs two. He gets wind sheared. He goes for the second. He fake casts the pummel. He gets stunned by the elemental. He trinkets to go for it. Chaos Bolt flies in. He does huge damage to Jamie, but not enough to kill. Jamie ducks around the corner and stays alive. Yeah, Jamie manages to escape with his life back to Asgarath. Numbers might have to go and sit down for a drink at some point in this match, but if ABC can deny that, they're going to have a massive lead in terms of mana. And now Infernion with no offensive cooldowns, no defensive cooldowns, uh -oh. very vulnerable. Jamie now getting Chaos Bolted twice with the Light Seed coming in from Rezus. Asgarath has to trick it out of the Incapacitate to keep Jamie alive. He doesn't have an Astral Shift. Iron Bark still a few more seconds, and ABC hold on. They manage to do so. Asgarath doesn't want to be greedy with this defensive cooldown. They need to keep Jamie alive. Nice shadow here from Infernion. Plot twist. They're able to keep up the pressure. Infernion falling a little bit behind. Jamie gets interrupted on his lightning last uh -oh. Beautifully done by Rezus. Jamie running and hiding for his life. He needs to get out of line of sight. Beautiful tumble on that Chaos Bolt, allowing Jamie to survive. Sharpened Blade may reduce enough healing on Infernion for them to find a kill during Jamie's hex, but no, it does not appear to be enough. Infernion stabilized. Nomalus gets out of the crowd control. Man is still in favor of ABC. Asgrath caught crowd control, but Stormkeeper pop. Jamie's looking to burst down Infernion. He's looking to just counter pressure. Like sweep on Jamie. He trades Astral Shift, trying to just respect the pressure as they look to close this match out. Netherward denies some damage. Infernion gates back to the pillar. Ah. Nixie in hot pursuit. Grapple weapon once again from Rezus. Denies execute, but it's not going to be enough. Earthshock closes the game out. ABC looks solid on their Thundercleave. And I also do want to say a plot twist can manage to take this game too. They've taken a good match out of the pool and moving forward we they definitely do have some hope but if abc can take it here they're going to be a team that's even scarier headed into game three and then they'll have every advantage headed into game four yeah and Ferdinand getting sapped early on looks like nixie's going to be putting most of his initial pressure onto rezus trying to deny the opener from plot twist now nixie turning his attention onto Infernion, and i feel like it's going to be up to nixie in this game making sure he's landing well-timed kidney shots well-timed groats as well as well-timed kicks to slow down Infernion damage not allow him to get off those chaos bolts and if they can effectively do that with Jamie's interrupts I think ABC will be in a good spot. Fernion is ramping up Jamie's going to need to avoid him here but he's playing quite aggressive this could be an opening but he's getting bursted Urshock kidney shot denies the incoming chaos bolts and Numbless is forced to trade but Numbless has made a change as well he is now running that way of the crane perhaps realizing if they had a tad bit extra damage they could have taken ABC down in game number one now activating that way of the crane leading the charge and with basically two monks punching Jamie it's going to be quite deadly ring of peace is there another ring of peace they knock Jamie off double knock with a spell lock perfect timing by plot twist not enough to force an astral shift unfortunately I do love the double ring of peace plays by Numbless and Rezus they're definitely enjoyable to watch I'm still looking for that perfect volleyball setup with a couple of chaos bolts it would definitely be an MVP moment for sure if they can execute yeah very satisfying moment but Infernion so early on forced to trade out the unending resolve 
Numbers with no trinket, and Furnion could be in a lot of trouble. A follow-up cycle, Numbers needs to hold on. He has three seconds on the life cocoon. If Furnion gets knocked away, Gladiator safeguard procs through. They shred oh. through it, and Furnion getting low. Numbers has to connect away the, or sorry, the life cocoon and manages to do so, but the pressure's not ending from ABC. I mean, the assassination rogue is easily bringing more consistent pressure than the arms warrior, but its defense is a little bit lacking. So now with no Gladiator's medallion, Rezus may look for a swap to Nixie. Asgrath needs to be ready for that with no Gladiator's medallions there is an opening but ABC get the first crowd control which means they will dictate the pace Infernion tries to deflect but Jamie instantly decurses the curse of havoc so Mortal Coil only hits one target now Infernion can't benefit and look for chaos bolts but Rezus looks to reverse with a double leg sweep of his own Asgrath instantly responds with iron bark stabilizing Jamie for now Infernion looking for Chaos Bolts, gets punted right into the Shadow Sight Eye. That's terrible for Infernion. He's now going to take 5% more damage. Perfect placement on that Thunderstorm. Hex secured by Jamie as he sets up the MVP play. Lightning Lasso gets removed by Infernion, but still, Numbless locked down in crowd control off the back of that perfect Thunderstorm. Infernion looks like he could fall. Ring of Peace buys him a couple of seconds. Double Ring of Peace might buy him a few more. Live Cocoon stalls it out. Infernion stays alive. That was such a beautiful play by Jamie. A hole-in-one on that eyesight so uh Inferno was gonna oh what just what? happened the burst damage from plot to us and this is why you can never leave a destruction warlock alone i mean they have the tools to do it but it's gonna be interesting to see we saw this composition uh, usually being played with the druid with the double warlocks and uh, the druid can kind of ad add a lot of additional stunts and drag the game on for a long period of time now they're going to be on the clock here but asgard is playing that feral affinity so he could also be a potential kill target the way of the crane is also going to give them a lot more damage hey one bolt was enough to do it last game let's see how two bolt chefs can cook up a victory yes game trying to get that cast out nice and early yeah, I actually watched Inferni on stream, and he was running this composition exactly. So I know that the, he has practice with it. Let's have to see if they can execute and find the win condition that they need. Already offensive cooldowns going to be used there by Plot Twist. Are they going to be able to find any Chaos Bolt? Nixie eating a couple as he gets low. Grapple Weapon used by Numbless. I like that. Oh! They can get the Chaos Bolts on Nixie with a Grapple Weapon. He's not going to be able to heal himself up. But Nixie line is sighting. He's going to be feeling pretty safe against Infernion. And yes, Dave. Nice strategy by Plot Twist. Grapple weapon, obviously removing a weapon from a melee damage dealer. And you need that as a Death Knight to use Death Strike to heal yourself. So Plot Twist obviously know that Death Strike is very powerful in the current meta and have crafted this composition to try and deal with it. And it was a close call early on. They pulled a lot of defense from Nixie, potentially even further moving into the fight with multiple Chaos Bolts flying in from two sides. Nixie is just out in midfield soaking all of the damage fortunately with his weapon not grappled he is easily denying it yep as long as he can get those death strikes off after huge damage lands that will increase the amount of healing death strike really can do and that's why nixie should be able to keep himself alive and i think that's potentially why they went with the death knight the death knight can actually tank a lot of this damage keep himself alive and actually stay in open field but if the game goes on longer to potentially dampening which i could definitely see happening with these two compositions, Nixie won't be able to keep himself alive nearly as easily. All right, we see a grapple weapon as Yes David Infernia not casting Chaos Bolts that now looking for it, but not coordinated. Double Mortal Quell right at the end of the grapple weapon, multiple Chaos Bolts. Nixie trades anti magic shield, and that's going to be super effective against two spellcasters. Ducking around the corner for a few seconds as Asgarath sits through crowd control. Jamie will break that fear with Tremor Totem. Asgarath looks like he's trying to sit down for a drink, and Fernion pushes forward to deny that. Manages to do so with the Reign of Fire. Good positioning there on that front. Potentially securing themselves a mana lead deeper into dampening. And I'm not entirely sold on this Frankenstein cleave just yet. Yeah, I think it's going to be difficult for ABC. Destruction Warlocks are not an easy target to take down. They have a remarkable amount of self-healing. Normally, we have to see Mortal Wounds from the Windwalker Monk or the Mortal Strike from the Warrior in order to take a Destruction Warlock down, especially later on in Dampening. But Nixie and Jamie, they don't have either of those tools available, so it's going to be no healing reduction onto Infernion or Yes Dave, but still finding massive damage. Numbless is forced to trade out the Life Cocoon, but that's really not that big of a deal. Numbless with the Life Cocoon, it's a very short cooldown. We need to see Nixie and Jamie continue the pressure. All right, Jamie gets a stun out there onto Yes Dave during that grapple weapon. So anytime this icon next to Nixie's health is there, he gets Nether Warded on his stun. Nice play there on Infernion. That puts Nixie even further behind. Crowd control solid in this position, but a Swiftman from Asgrath paired with any anti magic shield is likely to thwart the assault here from Plot Twist. Fortunately, they are developing a significant mana lead. Ring of Peace 
Not going to be having two of those, unfortunately. Infernion gets bursted down by a huge earth shock. Jamie ducks around the corner. Nixie pulls Infernion in. Yes, Dave has just been tossing demonic gateways, repositioning it constantly. But now Infernion has been left in midfield. Drops that unending resolve. Pairs it together with big chaos bolts. Nice denial there on Nixie's part. That anti-magic shield, that purple zone of defense, the only thing keeping Jamie alive. But its defense is being thwarted as he gets mortal cold into midfield. No, uh -oh. Oswald connects. Yes, Dave unable to find his, but the mana is even further ahead for Plot Twist. Yeah, Jamie with that grounding totem. You can see the cooldown below his frame. It is that purple button, the, the purple and white icon there. Once that's available, he can press that and basically redirect all the spells Yes, Dave and Infernion are casting to that totem, avoiding them entirely. And it's super effective against a spell like Chaos Bolt. So Jamie needs to make sure he's getting down those grounding totems. And Yes, Dave and Infernion, if they want to push through that defense, they need to be baiting it out or killing it off instantaneously in order to actually get the damage they need to close out the game. Huge damage on Infernion by Jamie as mana starts to even out as we get close to dampening. Numbliz moving across the map as he sees Asgrath very far back trying to drink, but as he pushed, he exposed himself to crowd control. Jamie took full advantage of that. Yes, they have gating in to maybe try and find Asgrath, but they don't find him until he was managed to drink a ton of mana back. So now the late game advantage is in favor of ABC, but you can't count a Chaos Bolt out, especially when there are two. Icebound Fortitude traded a bit prematurely on Nixie's part here, and now with that defense not available for Infernals in another minute and 20 seconds, Nixie definitely needs to be careful. Yeah, definitely. Infernion still taking damage. And like we kind of talked about, as dampening gets higher, the self-healing of the Destruction Warlock will be limited. And I think if Nixie can death grip Infernion out of line of sight or in an unopportune position, they might be able to get the damage that they need to actually take Infernion down. Bash now onto Numbliz. Numbliz mana is not doing well. Askarath has actually been able to sneak away and get drinks. If Numbliz can regenerate mana. I think Plotchus will be in a decent position, but with the way ABC is playing right now, they're playing very safe. There hasn't been too many moments for Plot to actually close out the game, and it seems like the ABC, they have a compositional advantage with the more I see this play out. Just very sturdy, durable classes. Bringing the Elemental Shaman with Grounding Totem is enough shutdown to deny those double cast of Chaos Bolts. Nixie is quite potent against spellcasters on the Death Knight. This composition is playing out very well for ABC. And now Infernion against the wall, very low on health and limited defense. How much longer can he stay in the fight as he ducks around the corner? Numbless catches a couple heals. Ring of Peace denies the reconnect, buying Numbless more time to heal, but even still struggling to just top Infernion off, finally bringing him back to full health. Now, here's the moment that Nixie is exposed Infernals available in four more seconds on Infernion. I do think that this is the set of Infernals that they need to secure a kill with. They're going to plant them instantly here on Jamie and Asgrath. Infernion looks to ramp. Rain of Fire, burning some soul shards, increasing the damage with that Grimoire Supremacy. Black Cocoon so that Infernion can get aggressive. It looks like they're going to go after Nixie. He anti-magic zones before they even gets hit, but there's still a second set of Infernals available, and he may need to start retreating back to the pillar. Nixie gets mortal coiled. Double set up here. Where are the Numbless. Infernals? Numbless actually sitting down for a drink. This is huge for Plot Twist. Numbless regenerating 60% of his mana in that situation, putting him ahead of Asgarath, and that's exactly where you want to be at this point in dampening. Now he has mana to actually push forward. Nixie getting lower. Like we talked about, the longer we go into dampening, Nixie can't heal himself up for nearly as much as we've seen in the past. If Infernion and Yesterday can actually land these consistent chaos, well, Nixie's going to be in a lot of trouble, Sid. All right, but there's still another set of Infernals. They dealt with Infernions, but now Yes, Dave has an opportunity to strike, and he's got all the damage, and Nixie's got no defense. One Chaos Bolt connects into Iron Bark. Asgrath connected that defense one second before that big hit, but still, Infernals are rinsing out. Grapple Weapon denies Death Strike if they can get in line of sight. Yes, Dave just can't get in line of sight. Neither can Inferni on those Chains of Ice. Super effective. Good avoidance on Nixie's part to deny that critical moment an opportunity to get a kill. But suddenly, I believe Numbless with a significant mana advantage caught into a hex, but Nixie is not connecting, so this hex is not going to be paying off too much. Mana in favor of Plot Twist, and they've swung the game in their favor. Yeah, Infernion still big pressure onto Nixie. Anytime Nixie is line of sighting with Chains of Ice on Yes Dave and Infernion, he's going to be okay, but when he's in the open, Yes Dave lands another Chaos Bolt. Nixie could be in some trouble. Jamie with a nice grounding totem does keep Nixie alive for now, but they did get the anti-magic shell. They got the grounding totem. Now's an opportunity for Infernion and Yes Dave to actually land the significant damage that they need. Numbless still has a mana lead. Mortal Coil coming out onto Jamie. One Chaos Bolt, two Chaos Bolt land on Nixie, but without offensive cooldowns, don't aren't, those aren't going to be nearly as strong as they need to actually take down Nixie.
Yes, Dave getting pushed back. We do see the team of ABC pinned down at the pillar. I would like to see Infernion and Yes, Dave split up. Right now, they're currently both on the left side of the pillar, so Azgrath and Jamie can avoid both of them by playing on the right side of the pillar. If they split up, at least one Destruction Warlock will get to cast, so I'm not a huge fan of their positioning currently. Big setup here with that Feral Affinity. Tons of burst onto Infernion, trying to catch him off guard, but the longer they stay in midfield, the more devastation Yes, Dave will rain down from above as both healers are slowly becoming totally tapped on mana. Nixie gets bursted as Asgrath gets spell locked, denying his incoming healing, but it's actually Infernion on the back foot. Double Mortal Coil the flex there, Assault, and Fernion looking for Chaos Bolts. Anti-Magic Shield from Nixie denies those. But after that defense, there will be an opportunity for more Chaos Bolts to sneak through. And with basically no mana remaining on Asgarath's part, these Chaos Bolts are effectively just going to kill the target while Asgarath cannot heal it back. They need to be careful and play ahead of the damage. I wouldn't even be minding a preemptive Iron Bar before the damage hits. Infernal's engage. Infernion's looking for a kill. Yeah, Icebound Fortitude as well as Iron Bark are traded out by ABC. Infernion getting low gets the Life Cocoon from Nubless to stabilize. But now the damage from Yes Dave and Infernion is going to be significant. Nixie could be in a lot of trouble. No defensive cooldowns really to left, uh, left to work with, except the anti-magic zone has to be preemptive with that cooldown to avoid as much damage as possible. But still, Infernion lands the Mortal Coil looking for a huge Chaos Bolt. Gets wind shear there by Jamie. Good backup. Jamie with no grounding totem, no wind shear. Now Infernion, he's getting aggressive. Uses the unending resolve looking to close out the game. Nixie responds beautifully with the anti-magic shell or zone. And that's going to deny Infernion. And he's actually completely wasted that defensive cooldown. Yeah, now he's an exposed target. Maybe it's a bait. Maybe they're trying to bait Nixie into the open so Yes Dave can close the game out with his Infernals, but they're so low on health, it's a very risky gamble to make here for Plot Twist on game number three. Infernion in dangerously low health. Nixie makes the trade, denying the kill from Yes Dave, and Infernion's is slowly and surely falling behind. Numbless ah! cannot connect enough healing. Life Cocoon buys him a few seconds, but now gets windshared by Jamie. Great crowd control, lightning lasso. How much damage do they have left? It's DR'd, so it's not going to be doing too much. Infernion gates to safety, avoiding the abomination, but Asgrath now jumping into the fight with that Feral Affinity, trying to add just a little bit more damage to close, but he's terrified of his teammates going down, isn't staying aggressive. Nixie oh, in trouble! No! He oh! he gets oh! by Infernion oh! at the same oh! time! Oh! First shock! Will it be enough? Infernion holds on at 10%. Asgrath can paralysis. If Asgrath just stayed aggressive, maybe he could have taken Infernion down. He's still trying to. Infernion running for his life. Drain life, trying to just soak up any extra health. There's no mana left. Lightning Lasso is not being interrupted. Asgrath does some damage. Fernion stabilizes. Jamie likely to fall. Shadow Fury secured. Asgrath, at least with Innervate, has some free healing. Jumps in to get some free combo points too, but he gets Mortal Cold away. And Fernion stabilizes. And yes, Dave with the carry Chaos Bolt. Oh, and those Warlocks gonna send ABC back to the Twitch. have to make sure that you don't get Chaos Bolt the two times, essentially, by either one of these Warlocks before that happens. Because if you do, it's gonna cost a lot of mana. You don't have any of that self-healing. And starting off, Nixie instantly going to be the target receiving some of that pressure. Then we are going to see that Havoc coil into a Havoc coil. We're getting it started here. Plot Twist trying to close it out. Double whammy, double inferno here. Will Nixie fall? No spell reflect as he traded out earlier on. Maledicts are getting activated. Nether Ward denies it. Spell reflect on one Chaos Bolt, pinning that back towards Dave. But there's more incoming. Nixie heroic leaps away. And as the warrior in this specific matchup, heroic leap is not an ability you use very heroically. You're always going to be using that to run away from your opponent and get back to the pillar with your teammate. If Nixie does overcommit that heroic leap, he then loses his one escape to safety. So let's keep an eye out for that heroic leap. Nixie manages to stay alive early on against the initial assault. Salt. One thing that Plot Twist did in that last game that they haven't done in this one is they split their cooldowns up into four main points. They would activate Infernion's Infernals, and someone would make a trade. Then they would activate Yeste's Infernos. Someone would make a trade. Then they would activate the Dark Soul of Infernion. Someone would make a trade, and then Yeste would activate his Dark Soul. And by creating four points of cooldown pressure, ABC basically couldn't attack without being exposed at some point. I do not want to see Plot Twist overlapping their offensive pushes any further into this fight. Yeah, Infernion is playing the Nether Ward. Yes, they've actually opting out of that, and I think he's going for the root on his Conflag, so he's going to be able to help out a little bit more by keeping Jamie and Nixie in place because they're not targeting him. 
seems like ABC, they want to try to shut down Infernion as much as possible as he is the Destruction Warlock main, so limiting his damage output, in theory, would be better than being on Yes Dave, but Yes Dave has been doing a great job so far in this matchup, building up pressure, Chaos Bolt landing, Infernion getting low, and a lot of trouble, it is the unending resolve, Numbless as well, he has the Life Cocoon, opting not to use it, trades it out as well, now Infernion looking for the counter pressure he needs on the Nixie, but ABC in this matchup with this composition, they seem to have a lot more damage with the Mortal Wounds effect from the Warrior, it's going to be reducing the healing of Infernion as well as Numbless, and in theory Numbless should be using a lot more mana in this exchange, Infernion falling a little bit behind by not having that unending resolve. Infernion getting caught in a Storm Bolt, typically a moment of burst for the team of ABC. Infernion dropping a Demonic Gateway. I think he should be pulling further back to try and get Jamie into midfield. Now with Jamie in midfield, Yes Dave can go after him a little bit. I think it's important to switch targets against a Restoration Druid and not attack the target that currently has life if you want to win on mana. Grapple weapon on Nixie as they burst him down, looking to deny die by the sword, but not enough damage to really force any sort of panic. Mana is significantly in favor of Plot Twist, but Asgrath obviously on that Restoration Druid can sneak away and drink. At this point in time, jumping in aggressively, trying to dish out some extra damage, but then getting feared. Termitonum will break Asgarath out. I do think Feral Affinity is super effective in this matchup to add some extra damage to the team and crack that Demon Armor defense. Perfect spell reflects, pinning a Chaos Bolt back onto Infernion, putting Numbless behind, but still with a mana lead. I think pressure has been in favor of ABC, but mana is definitely on the side of Plot Twist. Yeah, Asgarath, he needs to sneak away for a drink at some point unless they feel like they can close out the game. Infernals get dropped out. Nixie could be in some trouble. Asgarath immediately responding with the Iron Bark to keep him alive. Nixie in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be using that little side to line of sight, but a beautiful ring of peace keeps Nixie locked down. He responds with the Blade Storm. Heroic leap out of line of sight once again, and now Asgarath has an opportunity to top him off. Nixie with these hit and run strategies, I think, are great. When he has spell reflect, when he's high on HP, you can sit in, you can tank a lot of the damage, you're going to be feeling pretty safe. But mm. once you run in the open and you don't have those available, these Chaos Bolts landing from Yes Dave are going to be significant. Nixie's still low. Asgrath having to use a lot of mana to keep him alive. Mortal Coil lands, and Fernion looking for a Chaos Bolt. Grapple weapon onto Nixie. It looks like Asgrath trying to crowd control up Numbless, so ABC can get some counter pressure. Infernion under fire right now, but it doesn't look like the damage is significant enough. Nixie gets feared away. Finally, a Storm Bolt going to land onto Infernion, but he's still sitting healthy. And Steven and Infernion once again overlapping their Infernals. I would really like to see them split those up so they have a two-pronged assault against the team of ABC. Double Mortal Coil, good setup here by Plot Twist. Good follow-up. Nixie isolated. Spell Reflect denies the kill for now. Buying time for Asgarath to connect Iron Bark, but Mana is still not looking too hot. Numbless is babysitting Asgarath to stop him from being able to sneak away and drink. So long as they can stay on top of Asgarath and deny that, I, I think Plotus might look to close this series out, but still the pressure from Nixie, you have to respect that he's constantly been pinning Infernion against the wall. Yes, Dave has been counter-assaulting. It's anyone's match. ABC are on match point. If they lose this, they will be out of the tournament. This is their opportunity to try and get into a top three placing in in terms of points, they have to stay alive in the tournament. Will they be able to do it? They're running out of time. Yeah, Asgrath almost completely tapped. Dampening has just kicked in. Infernion's still in a little trouble, though he does have the unending resolve back up, and I don't mind it. If Infernion trades it out pre-dampening, it's unlikely he's going to go down, and that can rotate back up. And now Infernion's going to be feeling relatively healthy once again. Nixie's still caught into the open. Chaos Bolt's landing from both Warlocks. Infernion gets denied, but still, yes, Dave able to get these casts off. And this is the problem for uh, ABC in this matchup. Plot twist with two high uh, threat targets like yes, Dave and Infernion on the Destruction Warlock. Nixie's always going to be vulnerable. Ooh, Sharpened Blade, Infernion low on health. This is going to be difficult for Numbless to recover. Fernand goes for a Mortal Coil. Unfortunately, that pathing brought Nixie right back to a point where he could line of sight any incoming damage. Numbless, I believe, with a significant mana advantage, and that mana advantage could just be enough to close this series out. What are you going to do, Asgarath, with basically nothing left in the tank? We've got good pressure on Infernion. Nixie goes into battle stance. He's trying to get a kill here and now, but this is a risky maneuver. He's taking 20% more damage in exchange to boost his damage. He's just trading down by the sword to try and stay ahead of the pressure, but now he's trading down by the sword before the Infernal timing. Nixie exposing himself to try and get a kill. It's a risky gamble on match points. Yeah, definitely. Nixie still low once again in battle stance, looking to close out the game. Numbless doesn't really have too much left. Life Cocoon coming up in eight seconds. Infernion trades out the unending resolve. Infernals get dropped out for Infernion as Nixie runs away. And I think if ABC can weather the storm, Asgarath potentially finding a drink here. Numbless trying to shut him down. Does manage to. Asgarath, he has nothing left to work with, but Infernion needs to be careful. He can't overextend in this situation. Uh -oh. Leg sweep on Nixie. 
Second Chaos Bull connects. Nixie, how are you going to survive this? Shadow Fury lands. Jamie trying to throw in some heals, but he gets interrupted. Double Mortal Coil from Yes Dave denying both Jamie and Askarov any assistance on the Nixie. Nixie manages to survive, but what a scary moment. Two targets are low. Asgroth has no mana remaining. Nixie in defiance tries to get an intimidating shot on the whole team to stay just alive a couple more seconds. He has to go into battle stance if he wants to find a kill, but he'll expose his defense. He has nothing to stay alive. He's retreating away with the blade storm, avoiding the ring of peace knockback. Good awareness, but yes, Dave gates in line of sight, secures a fear. Jamie's out of position. He can't tremor totem it. Asgrath is feared across the universe. Nixie's gonna hide around the corner. Jamie sets up a stormkeeper. Nether ward available. If Infernion activates this, he could reflect a lot of damage, opting not to, potentially saving it to avoid Winter. They overlap their stuns. A mistake here on Infernion. Numbless stabilizes with life cocoon. Counterattacks with double mortal coil. Nixie in trouble. Double bolts. Now he leaps back to the corner, tries to get out of line of sight. They need to close in. One warlock on one side, one on the other. They got the box behind the box. How much longer can Nixie stay alive? The crowd control looks good. They tremor to him in the fear, but they follow it up with a mortal coil. Iron Bark needs to be enough, but at 17% dampening, it may not be. They dodge the spell reflect. They wait for its defense to fall. They connect the Chaos Bolt, and they look to close. Asgrath doing whatever he can with nothing left in the tank. In the meantime, Jamie trying to hard carry the team, getting a hex over on the enemy healer. Now Nixie trying to burst down Infernion, who is a far on the back foot. Asgrath continues to chain. ABC might turn this around. Yeah, Infernion's still low. Ring of Peace phase is in execute range. Can they take him down? Infernion trying to hold on, but Asgaroth comes in with the killing blow, and ABC saves the lives in this series. That's the first time. For that four spot of land, I like the composition, and the map as well makes sense for it from Plot Twist. I would have liked to see Yes Dave on that Arcane Mage just because he's so good at it, but I think the Frost Mage should do very well as well in this matchup. Plot Twist taking very interesting series is just another page in the book for them, but they want this one to end with a victory. Elimination Series, ABC versus Plot Twist over on going to decide it. Yep, Nixie caught in midfield. Yes Dave has been on Nixie, and we've seen Rezus on Jamie, so early on a split strategy here from Plot Twist. Yes, they've already using his Icy Veins uh, early on, but not really able to get too much done with that. Asgrath did manage to trade out his Iron Bark to deflect that attack, but that's the oh. only defense they were able to get out. I think Yes, Dave making a bit of a mistake here throwing away his ice block in the waiting room and then activating cold snap so he's going to be playing down an ice block but obviously abc may not know that information and they've been attacking rezu so that mistake may not ultimately cost him here in game number five but definitely hate to see it i don't know how much it matters to be completely honest normally we don't see the mage's ice block coming out until a little later on in dampening and he is ultimately against an arms warrior, so I feel like Nixie has no choice but to kind of go after Rezus in this matchup. You can see the positioning ABC has. They're just playing at the pillar. They're forcing Rezus to come in, and anytime he is pushing in and on Jamie, Nixie normally backs up and tries to get onto Rezus. Now he's just chasing down Yes Dave. And what if it's a mind game? This is an ideal situation. Yes Dave now looking for a full polymorph. Nixie storm bolts him, but you can see him just waddling away. Now <laughs> trying to reconnect to Rezus, but without that stun available, now caught in a Frost Nova, he's not going to be a big threat. There's no way he did it on purpose, right? I mean, maybe he ice blocks on purpose, tries to make the other team think that he's vulnerable, so Rezus is left free. Is, is Yes Dave with, like, the triple 200 IQ play, or is it just a complete throw? Try right, to find out. Either way, ABC have committed a lot of their resources on Rezus throughout this fight. And good crowd control initiation here. Banks them. Powerful defense. Maybe a kill. Huge damage. Touch of Karma on dangerously low health as Rezus retreats, but will he stay in it? Reconnects. Barely escapes. He needs a couple of big heals now. Numbless gets pummeled. Asgrath in their face looking for Cyclones. Not able to secure anything on a Numbless. Rezus survives, but these have been very close calls for Rezus. Now he's looking to reverse the pressure with that touch of death activated. Who is he trying to gun down? Doesn't look like this touch of death is going to bank them any significant push there. And now Rezus is behind. This is exactly what ABC needs to do. Normally you want to get on the Frost Mage, try to deny some of his damage, but instead just sit at a pillar. Go on a much more vulnerable target with Rezus. I think Rezus should ultimately be able to survive if he plays patient enough, careful enough. Now caught into the Storm Bullet, gets bursted down. Nixie getting counter stunned there by Rezus, trying to avoid some damage. Ultimately going to be running away once again. You can see Numbless, he's playing the grapple weapon, and he's been doing a good job with that in these matchups. Onto the Warriors and Death Knights to slow down their damage and their defense a little bit during these moments of burst that Plot Twist has available. But 
as I was saying, for ABC, they just need to ignore Yes Dave essentially at this point in the match. Chasing him down is basically a waste of time for this armed warrior, Ooh. and I feel like he's not really going to be able to get out too much damage. Nixie going into battle stance, but not going after Rezus. Trying to go after Yes Dave and chasing down the Frost Mage. He's going to get Frost Nova dispelled. Yes Dave then temporal shields while Nixie is guaranteed uptime. Looking for Polymorph. Spates Pummel gets spell reflected on the Polymorph. That Yes Dave will gladly take that with an Earth Shock hit to heal himself back to full. Life Queen denies any damage regardless in that play. Asgrath is behind on mana. Plot Twist initiate crowd control into Asgrath. Jamie makes a trade, activating that Astral Shift evenly with the Icy Veins from Yes Dave. A one for one exchange. But Asgrath is going to need to sneak away and drink. If he gets denied on this, Plot Twist have a solid route to victory. Yep, and Yes Dave with just all out control onto Nixie. Keep him in Novas, keep him in Polymorph. And that's actually an effective way of burning through a healer's mana. You polymorph Nixie, all of a sudden he has to dispel that, and that does cost a healer mana. So Asgrath, he has to consistently dispel on cooldown. We'll be going through that mana as fast as possible. But now sitting down for a drink, unable to find it. Uh -oh. Elmas has been doing a good job making sure he's able to chase down Asgrath. Yes, Dave taking some pressure. Temporal Shield should deflect the kill. It could be vulnerable. Still Nixie all over him. Once again, another polymorph gets dispelled. Yikes. Yes, Dave in a lot of trouble. Forced into his first ice block, but you can see Cold Snap with only 17 seconds left. Yes, Dave should have that second ice block available to him, and essentially using it in the starter room didn't really matter too much. Asgrath sneaks away, regenerates some mana from being out of combat, but not able to sit down and get a drink to regenerate any significant advantage in that regard. Jamie is behind on cooldowns, pinned against the pillar with this Ring of Peace, unable to move and taking tons of damage, but Yes Dave's out of position. It actually looks like they're trying to set up a one-on-one -on -one here with Yes Dave versus Nixie and Jamie versus Rezus, and I think that one-on-one -on -one definitely goes in favor of Plot Twist. Asgrath once again trying to escape and find a drink, gets denied by Numbless, but he had to use Gladiator's Medina to prevent it, which now exposes himself to crowd control moving forward. This next lightning lasso of Jamie could be devastating if he can stabilize. Yeah, Rezus gets a light sweep onto Jamie. Good burst damage here from Plot Twist to try to take Jamie down. Nixie now with a beautiful, intimidating shout all over. Yes, Dave, they might be able to force out the second ice block. Nixie's been doing a good job staying on target onto Yes, Dave, making sure he is pressured down. Now into a full polymorph, gets dispelled by Asgrath. Looks like Life Cocoon will be traded out by Numbless to keep Yes Dave afloat, but still, the uptime Nixie's had in this matchup has been kind of devastating onto Yes Dave. Yeah, Ring of Peace protecting him right now, but Jamie is the one counter assaulting, killing Yes Dave by himself, and now Nixie will reconnect out the back of it. Frost Nova buys a couple of seconds for Yes Dave to escape to center field. Asgarath is constantly running on the outskirts, looking to regenerate mana. Managed to get a significant amount there. Now a huge lead. ABC have managed to swing themselves back into this fight on game five. It's an elimination match. The loser of this will be sent home. Either one of these teams are looking to earn enough points to overthrow the current high point earners in that third and fourth place spot to qualify to the spring finals. There's a lot on the line here. Yeah, and definitely either one of these teams can pull a victory here. There's been a lot of back and forth pressure and momentum. Jamie getting low. He gets interrupted. Trades out the trinket. Asgarath uses this trinket as well. Jamie needs to get out of line of sight. Yes, Dave, if he can find any damage, he can definitely be in some trouble. Blizzard gets dropped out. Nixie now into a Frost Nova looking to reconnect, but the follow-up freeze from the Water Elemental will deny that mobility and damage from Nixie as he's caught into a Polymorph. And yes, Dave, really just trying to wean Nixie here. Just keep him snared up, keep him in Novas and Polymorph, avoid his damage at all costs, while Rezus has high uptime on Jamie, and that seems to be the game plan here for Plot Twist. Lightning Lasso gets counterspelled instantly. Good reaction by Yes, Dave. That Stormbolt was one second too late. Now Rezus on the back foot, caught into a Bashi pre karma as the incoming stun. Asgrath locked down in Polymorph, 15 seconds away from Astral Shift. Ray of Frost fully channels. Is Iron Bark going to be enough defense for Jamie to stay in the fight? Right here in game number five, ABC face elimination. Asgaras Innervate available just in time to catch some free healings and a free Cyclone, denying the damage of Rezus, allowing himself time to stabilize, giving Jamie an opportunity to breathe and get a Hex, potentially now opening an opportunity to counter aggress. Yes, Dave getting just destroyed by Nixie. If he's able to stay on target, they stack together for a triple fear. Nice play on Nixie's part. Can they keep a chain going? They get the Capacitator Totem. Anything else? Stormkeeper, he fake casts the incoming interrupts. Stormkeeper gets Leg Sweep right in the last second. Now Jamie under fire. Yeah, Jamie taking a lot of pressure. There's a Leg Sweep. Frozen Orb gets dropped out. Jamie has to kite out of that. Asgarath's mana not doing well. Looking for a Cyclone. Unable to find it, unfortunately. Another double Leg Sweep coming in from Rezus. Good pressure here onto Jamie. Once again, Asgarath looking to deflect it with the Iron Bark. But yes, Dave, playing the Kleptomania talent. will be able to remove all oh. the overtime effects. But in the meantime, Rezus getting bursted down as he's looking to 
Kite away. Life Cocoon traded out by Numbless to keep him alive. Rezus has not a single defensive cooldown left in this game. If Nixie can reconnect, Rezus is going to have to run away. I mean, he's already doing so, but he's in midfield against an Elemental Shaman. That's not where you want to be when facing down the barrel of Jamie's Elemental Shaman gun. And Rezus retreats around the corner. Numbless moves back. Ring of Peace prevents Azkarath from drinking. Mana actually evens out at this point. It's still anyone's fight. Jamie on the back foot getting soloed by Yes Dave. Jamie now running away, but Yes Dave tries to move for the kill. Gets denied. A couple healing surges are going to stabilize Jamie. Rezus now moves in to reconnect. Touch, touch of death available in five seconds, but Rezus is getting counter aggressed. He's got touch of karma. They could go all in for a kill on Jamie. Azkarath tries to sneak away for a drink. They've got the war banner down to try and get a leg sweep with it, but they kill it off. Numbless now gets caught as they swap to him in midfield. He's in trouble. Fortified Brew exchanges for that attack. He ducks around the corner and starts to recover. Mana still tapped on both sides. They're at 23% dampening. Basically critical mass in this match. Game five, and it's down to the wire. Yeah, Numbless pushing in. Uses the Maledict onto Jamie. Can he prevent enough healing? Asgraf completely tapped on mana. Yes, Dave just needs enough time for one more spell steal with that Kleptomania. Jamie will be completely free of heal over time effects. He gets interrupted. Caught in midfield. Yes, Dave teeing off with Frostbolt after Frostbolt to potentially take him down. In the meantime, Rezu's getting low. Activates the touch of Karma. And I think Plot Twist, if they can keep up this pressure, they can close out the game. Jamie has to hold on a little bit longer, Sid. Ring a piece back into that frozen ore. Perfect placement. Jamie on the ropes. Asgraf gets counted. Spelled. Yes, Dave secures the series. Plot twist, stay alive in the lower bracket, and ABC miss an opportunity. Plot twist is able to do it, and you know, I have to feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up one and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.